My name is Louise Hartman. I'm an architect, an educator, and a collector. I love scavenging and finding things. My office is clotted with often peculiar and strangely beautiful objects I've accumulated. I have special affection for things that participate in the designed environment, but don't necessarily register as designed objects. Designers have learned how to look. We see the world in ways that others don't. We take particular pleasure in sharing our design finds with others. We love noticing things and pointing out the hidden arrow in the FedEx logo, in part because we've never not seen it. One of my design finds is the humble coffee lid. I started noticing coffee lids when I was in college. Noticing led to accumulating, which morphed into collecting. The origin of the coffee lid is a distinctly American story that can be traced to the early 1980s. When we, as Americans, coffee-loving car drivers, bus riders, train travelers, and walkers forever changed the hot beverage drinking landscape in this country. Fast food outlets, drive-in restaurants, and convenience stores had saturated the United States by the 1940s. Menus at these establishments offered a wide selection of cold drinks poured over ice in disposable cups fitted with transparent lids, which included small cuts for the insertion of a drinking straw. Hot drinks were sold in smaller disposable cups. They had no penetrations other than small pinholes to allow steam to escape. But drivers and riders wanted to drink their hot liquids like their cold ones on the go. So coffee lid designers got to work. I now have the largest collection of independently patented drink through plastic couplets in the world. I share ownership of this collection with another architect, Scott Specht, and we have collected most of the lids ourselves, but we also have, over the years, benefited from the bemused indulgence of friends and acquaintances. We are ever vigilant, hoping to make new collection additions to our collection so that we might fashion a trade for the 1935, the elusive, original Stubblefield lid. The most common drink lid is the Solo Traveler, patented in 1986 by Jack Clements. This lid is now a permanent member of the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. These items are considered trash, and yet they come with a modest form of social capital. Now we see some of the earliest examples of purpose-built drink-through coffee lids. We have multiples of every lid, and this forms our collection. At first, coffee drinkers wanted only a tight-fitting lid with an easy open aperture. Later lids would offer many improvements, such as one-handed activation, mouth comfort, splash reduction, and in some cases, a trench with a sliding member. These descriptions may easily represent other more intimate pleasures. The US Patent Registry reveals only nine patents for drink through hot beverage lids in the 1970s. In the 1980s, the number jumps to 26. This is a design story that can be traced to a true beginning with a distinctive origin and a succession of continuous tweaks and modifications, including false fits and sanguine starts. This is also a game of one-upmanship, as each, each design team patents a new product, identifying specific improvements to its many predecessors, hoping to best all others. This is what innovation looks like. Anything that becomes an accumulation that becomes a collection requires a form of description and categorization. And so we've developed a bespoke taxonomy to identify these lids by means of drink delivery. The peel, the pinch, the pucker, and the puncture. The pinch lid is a curiously underoccupied category. We don't know if this represents a true Darwinian dead end or just the fact that other designers didn't pursue this strategy. Reusable, resealable, drink through plastic lids. This is an origin story that actually still has no end as we see design innovation continuously. I call this the extreme Darth Vader lid, somewhere between a Star Wars villain and a dystopian skate park. With over three decades of continuous development, one might imagine that a best coffee lid would have appeared by now, and yet the opposite is true. While some lids go out of production, new versions are introduced all the time. Unlike the ubiquitous gem paper clip, there is as yet no winner in the coffee lid competition. Forms, and many of them, have followed this function. 
No group of products undermines the form, follows, function, cliche better than this one. The function has remained the same since 1982. The parade of forms seems never ending. Our accumulation of lids became a collection when I first wrote about the lids in 2005. Interest from the popular press soon followed, and I've given interviews for many magazines, newspapers, including Fast Company, Wired, The New York Times. I've participated in IDEO, and I just signed a book contract with Princeton Architectural Press. But the thing I think that I'm most proud of is this letter from the Smithsonian. By these presents, we hereby irrevocably and unconditionally give, transfer, and assign to the National Museum of American History 56 coffee cup lids. We and the lids literally made history. We live in a designed environment. Every physical object in the world has been designed by someone, or more accurately, many someones. Designers are inventors and problem solvings, always thinking of why things are the way they are and how they might be better. The earth is our problem. This is the problem we need to solve. Thank you.